bell is for the meeting has been called to order, and now we've got a lot of guests here. Everybody stands up. We're going to have an invocation, and then we're going to have the pledge and four-way text. All right. Everybody, glad you're here. What a great day. So welcome to the May 11th meeting of the Rotary Club of Louisville. I'm Walt Kuno, the club's president. Please silence your phones. I'll be the culprit. Silence your phones. If you have a meal ticket, please have it, have it out for our service because that's how you'll get your lunch. And to have our invocation today is Dr. Linda Bartram Moore, Chair of the Interact Road Rack Committee, Vice Chair of the Rotary Honor Scholars Committee, Paul Harris Fellow <coughs> Plus Three, and all around do gooder. So welcome, Linda. <laughs> Will you please bow your head with me? Let us pray together, each of us according to our individual beliefs. With our friends beside us, let us offer thanks for our food, invoke blessings for one another, and for absent friends. Let us be a source of hope for those in need. Let us give gratitude for opportunity to serve our fellow man through Rotary. Let the feelings of love, kindness, and a well-directed yet gentle spirit always be reflected in our actions. We reaffirm our commitment to high ethics in all we do. We give thanks for the blessings, opportunities, and responsibilities that befall us as Rotarians. We continue into the unknown house of tomorrow with optimism, renewed energy, and a commitment to service always our Rotarian credo. So, with the bonds of Rotary between us, with our goals before us, with no task beyond us, with ever a thirst for knowledge, with a dream of a polio-free world, we are thankful for our Rotarian friends, for the precious outstanding youth who fill this room today, and the meal we are about to share, we are thankful. Amen. 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 Thank you, Linda. And now, for our pledge and four-way test is Dr. Tony Newberry, Vice Chair of the Rotary Honor Scholars Committee, Vice Chair of the Archives Committee, Paul Harris Fellow Plus Two, and he's the retired president of Jefferson Community and Technical College. And without Tony, this day would not have happened. Without Mitch, this day would not have happened. There's without him. Rotarians and guests, uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now join me in reciting the, the four-way test of the things we eat as Rotarians think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? All right, thank you, Tony. Please be seated. Rotarians, if you have a guest today, please make it your way over to my right, your left, the front, is the microphone. All right. We've got plenty of guests that are uh, from our schools today. There we go. Hello, Sandra. Hello. Oh, not that close. <laughs> Hello, President Hall. Uh, I would like to introduce my guest, Janine Triplett, today. Uh, I'm going to have her tell you her title because it was too many words for me to remember. So, I'm the Executive Vice President for a leadership foundation that supports um, business students through scholarship and leadership training. Thanks for time. Yes. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. Yay. <laughs> now we've got a couple of things going Hang on. on. Hang on, Bob. Another guest. All right. My guest is Sean Dolly, who's uh, been on uh, 25 years in the Air Force as a I think, fire pilot. He's been on Air Force One a few times, actually. Not as the president, but he's been on Air Force One. But his main thing now is he's had great executive experience as well. 
He does great leadership programs for corporations, companies, etc., smaller and larger, on leadership, on environment, on uh, uh, all kinds of team building, but basically getting to what people are, you know, what makes them act the right way. So, great guy, good friend, thanks. Either of you two or anyone else that's, that wasn't introduced wants to learn about Rotary in the back table. Um, Jay Mallory will be there to talk about what is Rotary and how you can join. All right, now Rotary Maggie Harlow. Okay, for you kids, do you know who Maggie Harlow is? Mother. Uh, you're not a kid. <laughs> so do you know Jack Harlow? So this is Jack's mom. She's in Rotary with us. She'll be in the Spotlight Leadership Global Center for our 100 Wise Women event on July 21st. Um, please attend one of these if you'd like to. They're well worth your time. And see our newsletter, Sparks, for the link to register. All right. Now, on with our program. I'd like to welcome Craig Mooney, Chief Operating Officer, Chief Financial Officer, Officer Bussey Construction, Chair of our Rotary Honors Scholars Committee, and Paul Harris Fellow kick off today's program. Welcome, Craig. Okay, I'm officially getting old. I need to bring my readers up here, so don't tell my kids. Okay, good afternoon. As President Walt mentioned, my name is Craig Mooney, and I'm the Chair of the Rotary Honors Scholars Committee. And uh, Walt alluded to this a little bit earlier, but Back in 2012, as a result of trying to do something big for the club's 100-year anniversary, they decided that they wanted to create something to address the issue of rising tuition costs and all the issues related to getting through school, uh, not having huge amounts of debt, and having students finish school and be job ready to, uh, to take care of, of that that issue that we were dealing with here in Jefferson County. So, in 2012, former president for the Rotary Club, Henry Heiser, challenged the community and the club to address these issues. And the result of that was that the club raised over a million dollars in scholarship funds to assist students at Western and Iroquois High School to attend Jefferson Community and Technical College or Simmons College of Kentucky tuition-free to pursue a two-year associate degree or technical certification. And also, UofL and Indiana University Southeast also offered additional scholarships to the Rotary Honor Scholars to complete their bachelor's degree. So every year since 2012, about 75 Rotarians and community leaders meet with approximately 135 students at Western Iroquois High Schools along with students enrolled in the Western Early College Program at Jefferson Community and Technical College. We work with the students over six sessions, over six different sessions on life and business skills, such as how to do, introduce themselves with confidence, setting goals for the future, identifying their strengths, developing an ele elevator pitch, writing a resume, and how to prep for an interview. The programming is rewarding, fun, and insightful for both the students and the mentors alike. And just like many of you in the room today, I was attending a past Rotary Honor Scholar Celebration Luncheon, and I was curious to learn what it was all about, so I contacted President Walt, and I volunteered one morning at Western High School. I enjoyed the experience so much that I kept coming back. I brought friends, colleagues, other business acquaintances with me to volunteer. You don't have to be a Rotarian to volunteer for this program. We have many community leaders involved. In fact, I've seen several of them in the room today. And uh, if, if you're a, a volunteer in the Rotary Honor Scholars Program, would you please stand up for a moment to be recognized? Please ask someone about the information. 
of how to get involved. We'd love for you to get, to get involved and be a part of it. But you also might be thinking like I was thinking several years ago. I can't commit to volunteering six times per year at three different locations. And that's a valid point. Everyone's busy. Between the two high schools and the early college program, there's 18 mentoring sessions throughout the school year. Chances are nobody's going to attend 18 sessions around the school year. Uh, most of us are too busy to make that commitment. And that's the great thing about being a mentor of this program is you don't have to make that commitment. You're not required to be at every single session. Come to the sessions that fit your schedule. Some people come once the entire school year, some come two or three times, some make it to all. So really, there, there's no barrier to entry. If you can make it one time, we appreciate your service and the kids will appreciate it too. So you'll get an opportunity to work with some amazing high school students and develop connections with fellow Rotarians and community leaders. You'll be happy that you volunteer. Now today we're honoring approximately 40 students that have completed the Rotary Honor Scholars Program. I want to congratulate each of you for completing the program and I wish you continued success. I hope that you will be attending a celebration like this many years down the road and congratulating and working with the next generation of leaders. But right now it's your turn to leave. So, Please join me in giving our Rotary Honor Scholars a round of applause. And now it's my honor to welcome today's speaker, Coach Al Davis. Coach Davis is a former standout player for the Bellarmine University men's basketball team. He joined the Knights as an assistant coach prior to the 2019-2020 season. And during the 2020-2021 season, Coach Davis helped guide the Knights to a highly successful transition as an NCAA Division I school. Bellarmine scored a 14-8 overall record and earned an invitation to a national postseason tournament after falling just one game shy of capturing the Atlantic Sun Conference regular season crown. In 2019-2020, the program's final season in Division II, he helped Bellarmine post a 20 and 8 record as the Knights earned their 12th straight berth to the NCAA Division II tournament before it was canceled due to the pandemic. Coach Davis, back then he was just known as Al Davis, played two seasons at Bellarmine, starting at guard in both 2015 and 2016, and uh, also the season 2016-2017, and then in the 2016-2017 season, he was named Great Lakes Valley Conference Defensive Player of the Year. He was selected to the Hall of Fame Classic All-Tournament Team and the All-Tournament Team at the NCAA Midwest Regional. Coach out and play some ball. <laughs> Coach Davis majored in Sports Administration at Bellarmine and received a Master's Degree in, in Sports Administration from the University of Cincinnati in 2019. He's a native of Colorado Springs, Colorado. Everyone, please join me in welcoming Coach Al Davis.
funny on uh, uh, his laptop. So I was getting recruited by Coach Davenport, um, and you know I, I played basketball originally at North Iowa Area Community College. Um, please raise your hand if you know where Mason City, Iowa is. <laughs> okay, everybody, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> but so I played two years there, and it's a funny story because I, you know, Coach Davenport kept, kept calling me, kept wearing me out. You know, Al, we love you to come to Louisville. Come to Louisville. Come experience. You. Come experience. You. And at the time, I was like, man, I want to go play Division I basketball. Whatever it takes to play Division I basketball. So finally, when those Division I uh, calls weren't coming, I was like, all right, well, I guess I got to go visit this guy in Louisville. <laughs> so I, I get on the plane, I visit Louisville, and the first thing that I ask Coach Davenport is, I say, Coach, I'm, I'm curious. How did you find me? You know, I, I played at North Iowa Air Community, a very small school here in Iowa. How did you find me? And, Really quickly, like sharp, he immediately responds, how did a guy 5'9 lead the league in rebounds? <laughs> and I was like, wow. He said, yeah, I do my homework, trust me. You do yours, I do mine too. <laughs> so uh, again, thank you to Coach Davenport for, for everything that he's done for me. And then, like I said, you all for, for having me here today. Um, next, uh, I'd like to congratulate all the Rotary Honor Scholar students that we are celebrating today. I know Craig already did that, but that, that's awesome. So, and I know we've already gave them a round of applause, but please, let's give them another round of applause for them. And, and I'll just go into detail just so we all know, and I'm not sure if everybody does know, um, but in order to, for them to all successfully complete this program, um, they obviously, you know, they have to obtain a, a GPA of 2.5 or higher, they have to have a good, good attendance, and they have to show good behavior throughout the uh, entire school year. So that, that is awesome to see. It is really awesome because I think you know, what they've done and, and their young career, you know, haven't even got to college yet. I mean, that's a testimony to what you guys are going to see in the future with your careers. Um, so this leads me to my next few points and the advice that I'm going to give you all. Um, I, I, I wish I could come over here and tell you all that I know everything and I'm just the best coach on the, you know, on the planet. <laughs> but that's not true at all. So um, I'm going to give you advice that I've taken with me um, for the time that I've had. Um, and, and, and in my young career, um, because I will say this, you know, experience is, is, is your greatest teacher. And Coach Davenport always says that, and I never really put that together when, he was, when, I, when I was being coached by Coach Davenport until I've reached my age now and where I'm at in my young career. Um, now that, you know, all the things that he did say and that he taught us, it's all starting to come together. And it's amazing how that works. It is, it is. Um, so, the first thing, first thing that I want to, want to touch on, you know, when, when Craig reached out, or Coach told me about this speech, you know, he, 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 you know, he said, you know, you got to have a, uh, the, the name of the speech. And I was like, Coach, how serious is the speech? Like, i got to have a name. i got to come up with something. What are we doing here? So, um, you know, I, I thought long and hard. And, and, you know, my wife, who was also, she's a teacher. She teaches at Portland Elementary. She teaches second and third graders. Um, so just being around education, my mom was, was a long-time uh, principal, taught fifth grade for 20 years. Just being around education. Right? I, I wondered, I said, man, what should I name this speech? And when Coach Davenport asked me, he said, can, can you speak to these, you know, speak and congratulate these young students for their, all their accomplishments? The first thing that I asked myself was, why is he asking me? And then I immediately thought to myself, second, like, immediately I said, well, why is he not asking me? Right? You always, you always question yourself. And I, I, and I know there are a lot of successful people in this room today that I'm sure I probably, they probably won't admit it to you, but they, they, they probably have questioned it at some point in their career, right? So my speech today, I, I want to say, I, 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 I titled it, Why Me? And then I, then I titled it, Why Not Me? And I want that to stick with, with, with all of you students that I do. I want that to stick with you because the skies are really the limit. They really are. So um, the first piece of advice that I want to give to you all, and I love this, this I love what I put together here. Pat myself on the back. But the first piece of advice that I want to give to you all is, this is funny, so don't be the cool kid. And, and what I mean by that is, when all of you were doing what you did to earn your, this, this, you know, be at, you know, be talked about today, as far as, you know, getting your GPA, you know, showing up to class every day, you know, being on time, being respectful, there was a point, and I have enough humility to say this, there was a point in high school Right, I went to, uh, to Falcor Carson High School in Colorado Springs. It's actually near the military base. I was from a military family. Um, there were a time where I would have friends, and, and they would do those things. And I would kind of laugh at them. I would. I'd be like, those guys. 
those guys. They, they, they're showing up to class early. They're sitting in the first row of class, right? They're trying their hard, they're, they're hardest at everything. They're saying, yes, ma'am, you know, yes, sir, look at people in the eyes, shake my hands. I was laughing at those people, right? But look did I know, all of those little foundational characteristics, those things stick with you forever. They do. And they, and, and they stick with you so much that you don't know who you're talking to, you don't know who, who, you're, who you're meeting, you don't know who you're around, who, who somebody may see you somewhere, right? You never, ever, ever know. And so my, my first piece of advice to you is don't be the cool kid. It's amazing how easy it is. And if I could go back to high school today, I can tell you that I wouldn't be the cool kid. I would try to be the one, first one in class, right? First one in class, one in the first row. You know, when, when I'm talking to, to adults, I'm, yes sir, yes ma'am. I would be that guy. And I, and I think there were times in high school that I, I skipped out on those opportunities. So that would be my, my first piece of advice to you all. My second piece of advice would be find your passion. And I know everybody says this, but you know, my first passion was I told everybody I was going to be an NBA player. That's okay. Everybody can laugh. Laugh at it. <laughs> and, and the reason why, so I, 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 the reason why I say this is because I, 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 I'm going to be an NBA player. And my, my five-year-old son now, he tells me that he's going to be an NBA player. And, and I love it because I was super, super, super passionate about basketball, right? So at the time, when I, I, I was getting recruited, I went to college, right? I did, all, all, I did everything that I had to do, right? And after basketball, after college, you'll get to this point. I'm sure everybody that has been through this, they've got to that point where they're like, all right, what's next, <laughs> right? You get to that point where like, all right, so what else am I doing? So I, I did. I got into, you know, I got into the corporate world prior to becoming a coach for one year, and I learned quickly that that wasn't for me, right? But I, I always knew that my passion was basketball, whether it was being around it, coaching it, playing it, whatever it was, my passion was basketball. And, and, and the easiest, the, the, my best piece of advice that I can give to you all is finding your passion, stay with it, right? Like, uh, one of my, I worked for a logistics company here in Louisville, and the big, one of the biggest things that I took away from that was they would always say when I was trying to negotiate deals, right, they'd always say, hey, always aim high. They can always come down, <laughs> right? So just with that, right, with your career, all aim high, right? Seriously, aim high. I would have told you five years ago when I was done playing basketball at Bellarmine that I would be an assistant coach there and contributing and helping and servicing young guys that were once in my shoes, I would have laughed at you. I really would have. I'd be like, no way. There's no way. But because I stuck with my passion, right, I continued to network and, and do the things that I did, that I told you about not being the cool kid, doing those things, got me to be in the position that I am today, right? And, and to be honest with you, I, I, I think that I can still grow and I can still continue to learn. And, and, and that's one of the reasons why I'm here today, right? It's getting in front of people and, and, and learning and, and networking and talking to those people. So that, that's my second piece of advice. And then my last one, and I'll leave, with, leave you guys with this, is, and it's very simple, and I, I think one of the hardest things for me was when I was trying to find myself as far, as, as far from a professional standpoint, it was, all right, what do I have to do to be successful, right? And everybody has their different values and what they truly believe is success, right? Everybody does, all right? Somebody who makes a million dollars, that may be successful, right? While somebody else who makes you know, whatever it is, and gets to come home and spend time with their family and see their kids grow up, that's success to them, right? So my third piece of advice is, and I'll say this, is just do the right thing, right? Everybody in here knows, right, from the standpoint that they've been in situations where they knew something wasn't right and something was wrong, right? And it's very, it's that simple, right? Me, from my experience in my professional career, you know, being honest, being clear enough from, right? Being respectful, being compassionate, all of those things that you really don't think go a long way in the business world, in any professional world, they truly do. Um, so, you know, everybody always thinks it's rocket science and thinks that, you know, what do I have to do to, to be successful? I mean, it's always those foundational things that, that, that you've learned in high school or when you were younger. It's always those foundational things. They'll never, ever, 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 ever leave you, right? And, I, it's, and I, this is the last story that I'll leave you guys with because I, I think this, I'm always trying to teach my son this. Um, I always teach my son. He's only five, so I know you guys probably teach. He's trying to teach his son this at five. Um, but my son Landon, I always teach him this. When he gets out of bed, I tell him to make his bed. And he always says, he always says, Dad, why are you always making me make my bed? Right? And, and 
But I truly believe is, if you can't take five seconds to make your bed, then what else are you going to do for the rest of the day? If making the bed is, if you can't do that, that simple foundational thing, make the bed, then everything else to you is obviously not important, right? So that, that's one message that I try to, 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 to leave my son with is do the foundational things. Do the little things first, and it's amazing what will come for, for the rest. Um, so with that, again, congratulations to all, to all of you all that, that completed the program, and I want to thank all of you for listening to me and, and taking the time to having me up here. Um, and if there, anybody has any questions, I'm open to questions. If not, thank you all. So, folks of my vintage know Coach Al Davis says, just win, baby, no, right? right? Just win, baby. I'm so, a Bronco fan, by the way. <laughs> so, be on the lookout for Coach Al and where he's going. I'm also going to suggest to you, look, be on the lookout for the young people that are in this room because they're going places. Walk up the microphone. Yeah, there we go. Walt's got the microphone and he just does stuff off script. So we're gonna I am going off script now. Linda, are you ready? We're gonna do we're gonna do interact road rack right now, okay? Oh yeah. Yes we are. All right, here comes oh my goodness. She she can dance with the best of them. Where is my coach here? There's coach here's Coach Rick. Mr. Rick. Walk up here and do the gritty, Rick. <laughs> you think you can't do it? Anybody watch his videos? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so come to the West End School of Green and you do learn the gritty. Um, or 
Um, is the advisor here? Okay, come up, up, up please. And that would be Tiosha Botson, Kiosha Botson, and Jakisa Wanda. So you're on this side. And and our come up. I just saw you yesterday. <laughs> come up, my dears. There you are. Look at you and your interact shirts. You're beautiful. So um, Rick or Mr. Harnett is going to hand this to their advisor and you will drape them. So one by one. So you will hand that to him. And he will, you can start from this end, that's fine. And President Walton, will you come up and congratulate them as they're great, please. Four of the young people standing up here last night were Jefferson College and graduation. Graduated from college, actually days before they got their high school diploma. Raise your hand. They got, I didn't do that. They got their college degree already. Unbelievable. Wow. And to be cooling for time, um, we can go ahead and um, hand the, oh, you got these already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right.
Today is a big deal for everybody. I've been working with some of you all for a long time. Um, at Western, sometimes they start as sophomores. So, are there any sophomores that came and worked all the way through? No, not today. Not oh. sophomores today. They started as sophomores and been working with Rotary more than one year. Okay, not here today. That's okay. No big deal there. You should be a lawyer and know the answer to the question for you ask it, right? <laughs> okay. But there are four kids, Linda, four that graduated with their associate's degree? With their degrees, their associate degrees. So, so a bunch of you in the room don't know what that means, but it means that these four young people took enough hours, how many hours is that? 60 hours of college credits getting dual credit and being able to graduate, you just heard, from junior college before they graduate from sure. high school. <laughs> Last it night. is a huge deal. Now, the, what you say, oh, really? I said, well, it is. And traditionally, at Western, we've had four students do this every single year. One year, we had 16 students do that. It was remarkable. What's remarkable about that? They have junior standing with no student loan debt. And so one of my charges to you is <laughs> one of my charges to the to the, the, the youngsters, young people, the our young scholars that are in the room is do your level best not to have student loan debt. It stays with you forever. I know I've talked to many of you personally over the past year and you each tell me one of your aspirations, I think to a person is to have your own home. And if you have student loan debt, that's a house payment. So please keep your student loan. You may have to have some, and there's nothing, but you got to have a plan before you sign that. And make no mistake, the folks who want you to sign up for student loan debt, they're going to say, oh, go ahead, take six years to graduate. That's just keeping that clock going and how much money that you're borrowing, because when that clock starts ticking, it really starts ticking and it doesn't go away. There are places where it's appropriate, and that's okay. But work hard with your financial aid officers at the colleges that you're going to for them to find you money, because they want you to stay in school. They want to find money that they don't have to put out, and they can put it right towards you. So make sure you do that, and that's a huge, huge, huge deal. So th those are my two charges. Now, um, I've been doing the Road Rounder Scholars work since um, 20. 14 at Western and 2015 at Iroquois, and I've learned every minute. But I tell the students, first, this is for the Rotarians and the folks in here in the room, the kids know this, put your Rotary Honor Scholar on every application, college job application, until you turn 30 years old. <laughs> and be ready when they ask you about it, and they might, most of them do as you get out of college, I'm a Rotary Honor Scholar, what does that mean? It means that the Rotary Club of Louisville thinks I'm smart, I show up, and I'm well-behaved, and you want to hire me. And just like Pope Jow was saying, don't settle for anything less. Yeah. And you ask for the job and say, why can't, why, I, why can't I be the one? And, and it will be really, really beneficial to you. And I've had more joy brought into my life by working with these young people for the past 10 years it's really given me a purpose. There's a whole bunch of us here in this room that, that uh, you all think that we're, we're, we're do-gooders. Well, maybe we are, but these young people are the ones. I mean, I put it on them. I said, heck, I'm going to turn old someday, and you need to stay in Louisville and support me. Come on, it's selfish. All right. All right, now, let's get on with uh, let's get on with what we're going to do now. And I know we're going to mess this up, okay? This is just Walt's way of doing things. Walt's words of wayward walking, okay? Yeah, Chris is going. Yeah, I did just make that up on the fly. Yeah. Y'all can really um, appreciate my wife, right? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to have um, the Western students stand up. And I'm going to read their name, or have them all stand up. If you're a Rotarian at the table, when their name is read, or, when they, or just present them with their Rotary Honor Scholars Medal when they stand up. We'll do Western, then sit down, we'll do Bureau Voice. Makes sense? Makes sense until it doesn't, right? Okay, here we go. All right. 
Dr. Linda A. Bart. Oh, you don't get one of these, Linda. <laughs> All right, here we go. Antonia Anderson. All, all the Weston students, go ahead and stand up. Weston students, go ahead and stand up. We're, we're gonna, I'm going to call all your names, and I'm going to do my best to pronounce them. Antonia Anderson, Rose Baker, Jalen Banks, Owen Broadfuer. I think I got that right. Owen, it's close. Close enough? All right. I'm cool now, as long as you call me to dinner. Jamaica Calvert, Sienna Clayton, Savannah Coleman, Autumn Etherton, Maya Johnson, and the next page, Zamzan Muhammad, Lee B, and Lee H, no, and they're from uh, Vietnam, yeah, and you're twins too, right? Yeah, great, glad you're here. Nathan Pennington, Bryce Phipps, Aiden Ransdell, and Gabriel Thompson. So that's our Western scholars, give them a round of applause. that's from Western or Iroquois High Schools, please stand up. I know there's some, some. No, they don't want to. All right, we're all good. Thank you, thanks for coming. Where's Wybette? She didn't stand up, and she's a military. The Rotarians, you may or may not know this, but Iroquois is a 21st century school, and Rotary was the business partner signed off on a $750 million grant for Iroquois for after school programming, and YVET is a member of Suburban Rotary Club. So she's doing marvelous work there with our kids, Kaisha and Taisha. She's in with them. I saw that. I messed it up, didn't I? I'm sorry. And tell me, I mean, Kiosha and Kiosha. Kiosha and Kiosha. There you go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. But anyway, we, we are really proud of our work with Iroquois. We're proud of our work with Western. All right. Is there anybody? Oh, there's, please, um, community volunteers that are not Rotarians that are here today, please stand up. 
So I know there's a whole bunch. So come on, come on, come on. So these folks just caught, come because they came one time and enjoyed it, but they were invited by somebody. And so um, Craig invited a whole lot of folks. Christopher Tuex came for a good long while when he was, um, anyway, he came to your point quite often. Anyway, life is good, all right? Any other, let's give our Rotary Honors stuff. Yes, Rip, I'm sorry. I think I need to correct the record. I okay. Associates degree. I believe we have five students. Nine. Five students. Yeah, was Alicia Calvert was, was our fifth. Did, we, did you get recognized? No. No, stand up. <laughs> flagship land-grant institution, the University of Kentucky exists to advance the Commonwealth and plays a critical leadership role in preparing the next generations of leaders contributing to the economic development and quality of life within Kentucky's borders. So that's next week. We're going to finish early, folks. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to engage the Rotary Honor Scholars at your table. I meant to do this a minute ago, and I just... Anyway, I messed up the schedule. Um, and now, for Walt's words of wisdom, and this is for our, for, our, for our scholars, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in the moments of comfort and com convenience, it's where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Martin Luther King, Jr. I'm pretty sure Miss Linda got that in our, into our um, Rotary Honors Scholars Manual. Here's another from Mary Pickford. Y'all go, who's Mary Pickford? She was a silent film star. If you have made mistakes, there is always another chance for you. You may have a fresh start in any moment that you decide. For this thing we call failure is not the falling down. Failure is in the staying down. And you've heard that in many different ways, but she is the first, the earliest one that I found. As you go on the way of life, you'll see a great chasm. Jump. It's not as wide as you think. It's from our Native American um, tradition. From Thomas Edison, who was had his office here for a while, right here in Smoketown. Opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed up in overalls and it looks like work. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last thing is advice for everybody in the room. If you don't like what you're getting, change what you're doing. All right, so that's Walt's words of wisdom. If you're attending Rotary University, it's going to be in the back. If you're a guest and want to know about Rotary as a member, it's in the back. You are going to have pictures with our Rotary scholars on the steps when everybody clears out. And uh, scholars, teachers, administrators, yeah, please, please stick around for our photograph. Don't forget the carriage trade shop is open as you leave, and we are adjourned. And ready? 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 University is right here.
they take, they take yeah, it 